and welcome back. I'm very excited to introduce you to our next guest, who is a dear friend, a former client, and a resident of Laguna Woods. I didn't know that last part until recently, but we are so fortunate to have with us Dr. Shoshana Bennett, who is a postpartum specialist, a coach, a life coach, a teacher at heart, and she's actually going to talk to us about living through life's transitions, just all the things that happen and how life looks as we move through them. Thank you so much for being here. I am so excited to see you. Not more than I am. <laughs> I am delighted to be here. Thank you both. This has been an awfully fun reunion and a reconnection and how fortunate to have you right here in the community. So. We've been talking a little bit to catch Amy up and now to catch up our viewers, but let's let's go back to the beginning, right? Sure. You were a special education teacher. That's right. And you don't do that anymore, but let's just follow the evolution because we talk a lot about women in business yeah. and also our next next. So how does life transition and how do we go with it? That's a biggie, but it started <laughs> at, at my first master's was in special education and I graduated with a few teaching credentials and was teaching all over and I loved the, the, the job and what I was doing and was working at the uh, community colleges in the San Francisco Bay Area teaching future special education teachers. It was around that time that I had a baby. We had our first baby, which we were very much looking forward to and I was hit after she was born with a very severe, what we now know is a postpartum depression and a few other illnesses at the same, mental health conditions at the same time. There was nothing but ignorance. We're talking the, the early 80s. Yeah. There was mm -hmm. no help at all. Uh, and all I was receiving was criticism and judgment and what's it, wrong. Right? Yeah, pull get yourself up. You're supposed yeah. to be happy now kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Uh, eventually, when my daughter was two and a half, I started to recover. Uh -huh. mm. And it was really, I should say, really life-threatening. Uh, mm. Terrible for my daughter and myself, and she actually did develop uh, problems, you know, That's an attachment reason. disorder, mm. right, which mm -hmm. is a big reason why I have such a passion of doing what I do. I, we watch out for the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, we had another child after I recovered, of course, yeah. and uh, I dropped again into a suicidal depression and, and quite quite frankly I'm I'm very lucky and grateful to be here. Mm. Uh, it was it was a close call. I, I figured if, uh, if 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 moms go through this and I wasn't able to handle it, yeah. clearly I wasn't meant to be a mom. Mm. After I started to recover um, about a year into this, I, start, I, I saw that there was a name for this and in other countries they were doing, doing things yeah. uh, with postpartum depression and I had to do something with the upset, the anger, the, the anguish. You know, I had to do something with what happened, something productive mm -hmm. with what happened to, to my family. And that really launched me into a career that became a really a thriving career. I started pioneering along with a couple of other people, the, the United States mm -hmm. in maternal mental health. And uh, to this day, I do a lot of traveling and speaking and training and, and mm -hmm. uh, teaching medical professionals and mental health professionals and doulas and others who are interested, run a, a co-founded an institute, uh, uh, so that there won't be that ignorance and, and families can really be launched in as healthful mm -hmm. ways as possible. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yes. Uh, that is so inspiring and it really hits home to me because I have a very close friend who became you know, she had a life-threatening case of postpartum depression, but her family approached it because of the work that you and some of the other people have done pioneering this, her family already knew about it, and so they approached it with, with love and care, and she recovered quickly, and she has another baby, and she took the, you know, preventive measures in time, and so I just, just am amazed at what I you've been able to I love hearing this oh. story. I mean, I'm sorry she suffered, yes. but that's why we did what we did. Yes, and, and, it's, and it's thanks thanks to you and the others who have made it made us aware of what it is, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's a very satisfying mm -hmm. story. Thank you for sharing that. And the evolution of awareness and exposure mm -hmm. and just the willingness to have conversations around these things that are so often isolating and push people out of society instead of bringing them closer because you've written books, you've spoken, you have your radio show. I mean, you were really out there doing it 
and and life kind of kept moving on for you too. I think that was when you had, was that your first uh, cancer scare? Not quite mm. yet. Okay. Yeah, I, I did go back to school, eventually got a second master's and a PhD, and a, I was became licensed as a clinical psychologist. I hadn't been oh. until then. And, and women, I, the women in the support group wanted to talk with me more, and can you help me with this? And you, I really couldn't. That would be, <laughs> that would be practicing without a therapy license. without a license. I could get into Which big we trouble do all the for time. that. Yes, exactly. Is that a thing? Is that something wrong it's with that? Thing. I'm not sure. <laughs> I won't tell. <laughs> they won't tell. Um, so yes, then I was able to go a bit deeper if there were other kinds of mm -hmm. kinds of issues. Uh, uh, my husband and I did eventually divorce when we, both children left the home. Mm -hmm. uh, we again we we stayed wonderful friends, uh, which I'll talk about in a second mm -hmm. if you if we have time. Um, uh, and he moved to Southern California. I stayed in Northern California, started another relationship there. When that relationship, um, oh, cancer. You right. wanted me to talk about cancer? Well, yes, that was 2011. Just yes, while I was up there I, uh, with, um, with this gentleman, uh, I did, uh, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer mm -hmm. and I ended up with a thyroidectomy. Mm -hmm. And two years later, I discovered I had breast cancer. So it was two very, in very close succession. She does things in pairs. <laughs> I know. I think you know. Right. And so again, deeply immersed in this experience, mm -hmm. like I was the postpartum experience. I went deeply into into all of that and the the whole that whole world. Uh, and uh, when I reemerged, I started talking about my experience because I realized there was some good help but not the kind of help that I would have really loved emotionally. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of good medical information mm -hmm. out there but I I wanted something more. So now you know the medical folks, the people I work with in Northern California and people I'm talking with now are sending me can their cancer patients and cancer survivors and I'm doing uh, some emotional coaching, coaching with, with them, them too right, right. Mm. well because this even i mean think about it the terminology for all of this even the term coaching didn't apply appropriately before now we understand that coaching through all of these life situations you are effectively a life coach with fully licensed and practicing legitimately and now things continue to change they do and i, I you know i use coaching quite a bit i'm a clinical psychologist i can certainly practice cognitive behavioral sure. therapy and mm -hmm. interpersonal therapy and sometimes I do you know I'll jump into that if, mm -hmm. if I have permission with them and mm -hmm. that's our relationship but often what people want they don't want to talk about their childhood for six months sorry therapists out there <laughs> the guy, they, I, I know what I wanted when I was mm -hmm. immersed in the postpartum depression I know what I wanted when I was immersed in the cancer mm -hmm treatment stuff. Right. I wanted practical suggestions. I wanted tips mm -hmm. every day, how to put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. I didn't just want to talk theory or mm -hmm. concepts. I needed things I could really sink my teeth into. So that's what I tend to do because that's what, right. that's what mm -hmm. I wanted. Well, and now you're doing it again. It, it's true. Yeah. Uh, when that relationship ended in Northern California, uh, my husband, uh, my ex, um, uh, had not found another relationship, and he missed me. And I, and you we were still again, dear friends. We are. We have always been. Yeah. We have always mm -hmm. been best friends, and maintain that throughout. I moved down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, live with him currently. N n it's not a romantic relationship, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a it's a dear relationship. During that period of time, when I first moved down about three and a half years ago, our son, who had been an athlete, did a lot of climbing and hiking and etc. He started to get medical mm -hmm. symptoms, some health symptoms that were quite worrisome, and they they got worse and worse. He was finally diagnosed with Lyme disease and mm -hmm. there are co-infections going mm -hmm. on that nobody has really had gotten a real handle on. Mm -hmm. So he has he has declined in health uh, and I s began caretaking him. He couldn't see well enough to drive so I would mm -hmm. drive him to his medical appointments etc and mm -hmm. kind of manage his care because the overwhelm and the brain fog I mean he, he couldn't do it and mm -hmm. this 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 
kid, I know, since I raised him, he was one sharp cookie. And, mm. and, and, and it's, it, it was real, it's sad for, for me to watch that decline and, and also Difficult very, very for sad for him. Oh, right. So nice. Last year, uh, my ex developed ALS. Mm. And we had loved traveling before. We had done all kinds of, you know, very active together. Mm -hmm. So I have been observing and caretaking uh, my my ex as right. well. Mm -hmm. So again, immersed very mm -hmm. deeply in this in this world and managing things. And it's it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Some of the feelings I've been having, and still managing a business, mm -hmm. kind of to harmonize mm -hmm. everything. Right, right. I work virtually with my clients, so mm -hmm. that makes it a bit easier. Yeah. I'm not traveling to an office, but um, some of the postpartum feelings, not the depression mm -hmm. per se, mm -hmm. but the uh, new mom feelings of mm -hmm. being overwhelmed yeah. and uh, do my needs matter anymore? Mm -hmm. Or is it all about you know, a little person or a big person I'm taking care of? Is it, should the focus only be on my loved one? That started to come back. It's like I got flashbacks of, ooh, I have felt this before, you know, and uh, when I talk now just very organically in the, in the village with other caretakers, I'll lean over and say, make sure you take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. I also watched my mother caretake my father with Parkinson's she died a few years before he did. Mm -hmm. And I, pr I talked to my mom all the time, and uh, she, she passed away, but, mm -hmm. I, but uh, as I mentioned, but yes. she, I talk with her and say, yeah. Mom, I love you, you're the greatest mom on the planet, but I'm not gonna do this part like you did. Mm -hmm. And I know she's, she's happy for she me agrees. that I'm, I'm putting Absolutely. the self-nurture as an important component. Well, and, and I think that the next, again, to the point of next next, you have a natural tendency to advise and coach and nurture people in general that this is showing you your next level of um, just helping and mm -hmm. even professionally moving into that next level of what might be business for you is coaching people who are going through these life transitions to make sure that they do take care of themselves, to give them ways to take care of themselves, not to isolate, for instance. Right, and right. exactly. Yeah, right. I think that's a thing. I think one thing that's so compelling about your story is that, you know, most of us experience one or two of these things. Mm. You know, I've been through a divorce and I understand going into a therapist's office and wanting those practical tips like, what do I do tomorrow? What should, I mean, I watched Legally Blonde for three months every single day when I first got divorced because I thought, if she can do it, <laughs> so can I. Good for you. That Whatever was helps. my self-therapy. <laughs> but it clearly really worked. <laughs> <laughs> but you have gone through so much, and I think it, that's what makes... Um, probably your, you know, one thing that probably makes your business thrive as it is because you can really have that deep empathy for people and you know what they've walked and can really help advise yeah. them from not only from a, an experiential point of view but also from a professional educated point of view and it's a pretty amazing. Yeah. Thank you and I'm, I've always been a believer as I know you are as well, of being real, yeah. mm -hmm. being real. I mean, people would come over to me after a, a, a talk or a keynote address at a conference going, you talked about, you're a therapist and you talked about your own depression, how brave. Mm -hmm. That never, yeah. that didn't even resonate. You know, I, what do you mean being brave? We're all in this mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. right. I'm a person. I mean, mm -hmm. I've got hormones and biochemistry and psychology, you know? Yeah. So to also as professionals often, there's that them and us thing going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. That's never been who I am. I come mm -hmm. from an advocate, teacher point of view. And of yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's always an honor and a privilege to work with So with how folks. can people find you? I know you actually have jumped out there ahead of this now and have purchased the website that they can find you on. So where can they find you? Well, they can either go directly to drshosh.com, D-R-S-H-O-S-H.com, or thecaretakercoach.com. I love that. Mm, which is I a brand like new that. domain. And, you know, I know, again, when I was searching for help for myself as a caretaker, there wasn't the kind of mm -hmm. emotional and practical help. And that's what I, I hope to, Perfect. to serve now. 
Well, I have about five people I'm going to send that website to yeah. as soon as we get off. Exactly. So you can we're going so to post it. We'll have it posted mm -hmm. on the screen for our viewers. And I hope people will take advantage of it because having you here locally is such a gift. And I can't share with our viewers enough. Take advantage of Dr. Shosh being here. She's an amazing human being. Even just to meet her and say hello would be a lovely experience. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Lauren. Thank I you. I appreciate you very it. much. And we'll be right back.